All right, we're going to look at some second-order linear non-homogeneous ODEs, still with constant coefficients. Now, uh, we've seen the three cases for the homogeneous case, uh, the homogeneous form of OD, uh, and that gets you the uh, fundamental solution set for those. Uh, we're now going to just spend the rest of this experience and then the whole next one looking at changing what's on the right-hand side. Uh, this is formally covered with the technique of the method of undetermined coefficients and the method of variation parameters. Um, but because that's such a big topic and a challenge for a lot of students, we're going to introduce a couple simple examples here, uh, which have the same basic idea, uh, and that is that the particular solution just looks like the right-hand side function. Uh, but the algebra is a lot easier. So i got two examples, and I thought I would uh, just skim through the first one, which is already written out, and then we would solve the second one together. And you have uh, two similar examples in the practice. So in the first example, the right-hand side is a linear function. All right, now, no matter what the right-hand side is, you want to solve the homogeneous form first. And so you just take the same ODE, but replace the right-hand side with 0. And we talked about that in the previous methodology, how that works. So we won't go into all the details, but we think it's e to the gamma t, or e to the gamma x. Uh, we substitute that in. We get the characteristic equation. That's a quadratic equation for gamma. You solve that, and you get either two numbers for gamma or one. And remember, in the case when you get one uh, real solution, um, that you use e to the gamma x as one of those, and x e to the gamma x as the other solution. So that was the second case in the last methodology. So that gets you the fundamental solution set for the homogeneous form, right? And if you put these in there with any constants in front, it's going to zero this out. But we need to now put in a third piece, which when you put in there will give you the 4 plus 8x. All right, and here's the trick to the method of undetermined coefficients, is that the particular solution is the same type of function as what's on the right side. In this case, the right-hand side is a linear function, 4 plus 8x. So we're going to try a particular solution that is also a linear function. Uh, the book's notation is to use capital letters for these coefficients. So I'm going to follow along with that. All right, now, if we knew what big A and big B were, we'd be done. So that's what we're trying to do, is figure out what the big A and big B are so that this function goes in here and gives us 4 plus 8x. So we'll take derivatives and do all the work with A and B and then solve for A and B algebraically. Uh, we need two derivatives because this is second order, and they're pretty easy. The first derivative is just B. The second derivative is 0. If you substitute all these into the full differential equation, um, you'll get 0 minus 4b plus 4a plus bx, right? So again, that's y, that's y prime, that's y double prime. And this simplifies into this equation. And then it might not be obvious what a and b are from that equation, but this has to be true for all values of x, which means the like terms have to match up. Um, you can solve this other ways by substituting values for x, but uh, you do want to know how to do the like term approach, because here it's easier. If the like terms have to match up, well, there's only one x term on the left, and there's only one x term on the right, and so those have to be equal. And that tells you what b is. It tells you b has to equal 2. All right, well, the constants also have to match up, and so there's two constants on the left, and there's one on the right. But we know what b is. We found it was 2. So you actually get this relationship, which tells you what a is. So we know a, we know b, and the particular solution was supposed to be a plus bx, so we know it's 3 plus 2x. You can check, uh, take its derivatives, substitute them in, and you'll see that it does work out. So now the general solution includes the fundamental solution set, right, with those two solutions to the homogeneous form, also, adding on to that, the particular solution. Uh, you could find specific values for C1 and C2 if you had initial conditions, um, but we don't. But we will in the next example. So let's go through the 
next example. As before, we need to solve the homogeneous form. So we take the differential equation and replace the right-hand side with 0. Right. Uh, we're going to take the shortcut to get to the characteristic equation. We know that it's gamma squared minus 4 gamma plus 4 equals 0. And this factors. And it factors the same as the other one. So we're not going to challenge ourselves a whole lot with different cases for these solutions. But uh, you know how to do this from the previous methodology. Uh, this is a repeated root. Gamma minus 2 is gamma minus 2. So gamma is going to be 2. So that gives us two solutions, right? e to the 2x, and x e to the 2x. So in the first example, the particular solution was linear because the right-hand side was linear. In this example, the particular solution will be exponential because the right-hand side is exponential. Now, taking derivatives of the particular, which we have to do, won't change that exponent. All it will change is what's in front. So that's really the key to the particular solution is that we're stuck with it being e to the 3x because that 3 won't change. Um, but we can pick whatever number we want to go in front as the undetermined coefficient. And you know, we know we take those derivatives, the 3 is going to come out, and that's going to change the coefficient. And so we're going to figure out what does a have to be so that when you put those derivatives in here, you get it to add up to just a regular e to the 3x. Okay, so derivatives of this particular, leaving a, as a, um, you'll get a 3 on the first derivative, and you'll get another 3 on the second derivative giving us 9. Okay, so we've got the particular solution and its derivatives. We're now going to substitute that into the non-homogeneous differential equation. Oops, I forgot to put a second derivative thing there. Right, and you see everything has e to the 3x, so that's just going to be divided away. Oops, that's not a 43, that should be 4 times 3. So we've got 9a minus 12a plus 4a should all equal 1. Right? That's the coefficient on the right-hand side. So there's not a lot of equating coefficients because there's just constants here. Um, and this actually just simplifies. Right? Uh, 9 and 4 is 13, minus 12 is just going to tell us that A is 1. So we don't really have to do step 5 here because there's not a lot going on. Uh, we can check the particular solution. Turns out that the particular solution matches up with that. Uh, now you have to be careful here because this is an exponential and the fundamental solution set are also exponentials. So if for some reason that these were also 3's, you would already have an e to the 3x. And so you wouldn't have something linearly independent with that particular solution and uh, it would be another issue to address. And I believe that will be covered um, in the next unit.
Uh, so yeah, we can see that not only is that the particular solution, but that's also the derivatives. And so if you were to put in e to the 3x here, it should actually check out. Because the negative 4 and positive 4 will add to 0, and that just leaves that last e to the 3x there. So that checks out. All right, we can now write out our general solution. And when you do in the practice, uh, you're going to find that a lot of these problems do not ask for the general solution. They actually just ask for the particular solution. So you may not have to do this whole methodology. You know, you could stop right at step six, and you can even skip the first step, step one. Okay, so we know that y1 from earlier is e to the 2x, and we know y2 is x e to the 2x. And we know the particular solution is e to the 3x. So let's go ahead and find specific values for c1 and c2 using the given initial conditions. So here's our initial conditions. And if we let x be 0 and y be 2, you're just going to get c1 plus c2 equal to 2. Oh, actually, no. Uh, if x is 0, uh, this whole middle term is gone. Um, but this one's also not gone. That particular is going to be 1. So you'd actually get 2 for y c1 here, 0 there, and 1 there. And that tells you what c1 is. c1 would equal 1. All right, let's take a look at the derivative. Going to get an extra 2 here. And let's see. So we use the product rule here, the derivative of x is 1 times e to the 2x plus x times the derivative of e to the 2x, which is 2e to the 2x, plus 3e to the 3x. So there's your derivative. And if we let x and y both be 0, gone again. And c1 is 1. Let me get this. And that tells us c2 is 5. Sorry, negative 5. Alright, so let's put it all together with the values of c1 and c2. c1 is 1 and c2 is Negative 5. And there's a solution to the differential equation.